In this video, we're going to go through some patterns you can use to help you multiply binomials more confidently and more efficiently. For our first example here, we have 3x plus 5 times a 3x minus 5. Now you'll notice here we have a term of 3x and a 5, another term of 3x and a 5, and the only difference is that there's a plus and a minus here. Now this is a pattern we can use called the difference of squares. If we see this pattern here where it's the same terms, just the only difference is a plus and a minus, we can use the form a squared minus b squared to get our answer. In this case, our a term is the 3x and our b term is the 5, so all we need to do is square 3x, which would be 9x squared, and then we're going to have a minus, and now we're going to square the b term, which is a 5, and 5 squared is 25. So our answer is going to be 9x squared minus 25. Now if you're unsure that you use the pattern correctly, you can always double check by using the box method or, or the FOIL method. So we'll double check it with the FOIL method. If we have a 3x plus 5 and a 3x minus 5, if we want to FOIL it out, we do the first terms. That's 3x times 3x, which is 9x squared. Then we do the outer terms. 3x times a negative 5 is negative 15x. The inner terms, 5 times 3x is a positive 15x. And the last terms, 5 times a negative 5 would be minus 25. You'll see when we go to combine like terms and we add the negative 15x and the positive 15x together, they cancel each other out. And all we're left with is that 9x squared and the minus 25, which is exactly what we got up above, so we know that we use that pattern correctly. Our second example might look a little bit confusing when you start, because you might think, hey, we're supposed to be multiplying binomials, and I only see one binomial. But you're correct, you only see one binomial here, but this squared symbol means that we're going to be taking this binomial times itself. So really, if we wanted to rewrite this, this is the same thing as 4x plus 2 times another 4x plus 2. And while you're right, we could go through and we could FOIL this out, and or use the box method to figure out what it is, even faster than that is recognizing that this is a pattern that's always going to be true. If we see this, this is what we call the square of sums. What we can do is change it to the form. We want it to match a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. If we do this, the 4x is my a term and the 2 is my b term. So if I'm going to square a, that means I'm squaring 4x squared or 4x and I'm going to square it. That gives me a 16x squared. For the middle term here, the 2 times a times b, I like to do the a times b first and then just double it. 4x times 2 is 8x. If I double that, I'm at 16x. And now I have a b squared. Well, 2 squared is 4, so I'm going to have a plus 4. Again, I could go through. I could FOIL it out if I wanted to. 4x times 4x, that's my 16x squared. I'd have a 4x times 2, which is 8x. And then I'd have another one on the inside. That gives me the 16x, and then the 2 times 2 is a 4. So this pattern right here is always going to be true when you see it written like this. Or sometimes you might see it written like this, but either way, you can use that squares of sums pattern. Our last example here might look a little bit confusing as well, because you now see the two binomials that we'll be multiplying together, but there's also a number out in front. You may be wondering, what order do I need to multiply them? Well, let's think about this quick example over on the side. If I want to multiply 2 times 3 times 4, does it matter which order I multiply them in? Let's check. 2 times 3 is 6, times 4 is 24. Well, if I take 3 times 4, I get 12. If I multiply that by 2, I still get 24. And even if I do 2 times 4 first, I get 8, and I multiply by 3, I'm still going to get 24. So it appears it does not matter what order we multiply in, as long as we multiply everything correctly. So going back to this example now, I really have 3 times this parenthesis times this parenthesis. My preferred method to do this is to pretend that the number out in front is not here, and just look at these two right here. I can use any method. I could use the box method. I could use the FOIL method. Or, in this case, I recognize that x minus 4 is the same thing as x minus 4. So I can use the squares of differences pattern, which states that a squared minus 2ab plus b squared will be the same thing as this. Well, when I do that, if I'm matching that term, the a term is the x and the b term is the 4. So x squared is going to be x squared. The a times the b is 4 times x, which is 4x, and I need to double that, so 8x, so I have a minus 8x, 
and then my b term was 4. If I square that, I should have a plus 16. So I can use that pattern to get this portion of my binomial multiplied. I, could, I can use this pattern. If I don't remember that pattern, I can always foil it out. That's no problem either. But I do need to remember still that this 3 needs to come down into the front because I still need to multiply by that. At this point, all we have is the distributive property, and I just need to distribute a 3 to all of the terms inside the parentheses. If I do that, 3 times x squared makes 3x squared. 3 times negative 8x makes a negative 24x. And a 3 times a 16 makes 48, so I'd have plus 48, and that would be my final answer right there.